Next, let's talk a little bit about ChatGPT plugins. So plugins are available, um, currently at least, in ChatGPT Plus only. I imagine that's going to change. Uh, but it's one of these settings that you need to toggle, just like we had to toggle the setting on to have web browsing available. There's a setting for plugins. And then if you want to use plugins, you need to select plugins. And additionally, you then need to actually install plugins from the store. So what are plugins? They're basically like apps or integrations that work directly inside of ChatGPT. And right now it's very, very early in the, this, the development of plugins. There's a, a handful of them out there and some of them are useful. Some of them are kind of dumb toys. Uh, but if you go here, no plugins enabled, click, there's a plugin store that we can visit. And it doesn't look like there's that many when you load it. At least for now, it's showing me the popular ones. There's only what, 10 or so that it's showing me. If you go to all, there's quite a few more. 17 pages for me right now. Now, I, I'm positive this will change. There'll be way more, although I've actually seen some plugins be removed from the store, uh, and the number has gone down. Uh, possibly some that snuck through the, is it sneaked through the approval process and had something potentially malicious, who knows? But there's at least two I've seen that are no longer available. Anyway, you can see there's a bunch of different plugins uh, ranging from things like an Instacart plugin that you can ask about recipes, meal plans, and more, and then it gets cut off here, but you can use it to uh, actually place orders with Instacart. Or smaller things, let's just look at popular ones, things like a kayak plugin where you can search flights and get real recommendations for actual flights directly within ChatGPT, or a diagram generating plugin. Why don't we try that one? So if I want to use it, I have to click install. This one's called show me. I can go to installed and you'll see that it's been installed. You can also uh, uninstall it if you want to. And now I can select show me if that's what I want to use. The trick with plugins that I found that is a little difficult when you first install a new one and you don't know how it works is that there's no obvious documentation. So we can do something like, how does this plugin work? And it should respond to me with some documentation. The show me plugin is designed to create visual diagrams based on user requests. It uses a syntax called mermaid. Mermaid is a simple markup based language that's used to generate flowcharts. Here's how it works. Okay, so I have my request. Show me how a car engine works. Why don't we just try one of these examples? Uh, why don't we do draw me a mind map for, let's do cheese making. So again, I'm asking it how it works first. And then I'm gonna give it an actual prompt and let's see what it does. It's using the plugin as you can see right here. And if I expand this, it's showing me some of the requests that are being made behind the scenes. You really don't need to worry about that. I'm gonna collapse it. And eventually we will hopefully get a nice mind map about cheese making. And here we go. I'm getting the mind map. So it's giving me an explanation, but then we can see the map here. Cheese making is split into ingredients, process and types. And this is still, you know, it's a very small mind map as far as the whole world of cheese making goes. Um, and what you can also do is edit this. So you can click this, it will take us to a diagram maker where we can then tweak it and add our own stuff in if we want to. So that's just our first example of a plugin, very simple, but it shows the process. You have to go to the store, install a plugin, and then once you have installed it, you can use that plugin. And the, the most important first step is understanding how it works. Some of them are a lot more complex than others, but this is a pretty simple one to start with. Next up, I'm gonna show a few more examples of plugins that may or may not be all that useful. Uh, some of them are useful. There's no way for me to show all of the plugins that are available because even if I could, there's thousands of them right now and there's new plugins added pretty much every day. Thankfully, there's now a way to search through plugins, which there was not until recently. Uh, and the plugin that I'll be showing you in this video is called Ask Your PDF. And Ask Your PDF is one of many plugins that kind of add the same set of features to ChatGPT. There are many plugins that allow you to work with PDF documents. So if you have a research paper, a, a manual, I was playing around with this, with the manual for my, I have a, a generator at home. I live actually, well, I don't know if I ever talked about this. I live off the grid and uh, I have a, a solar setup, but I have a, a backup generator and the generator is incredibly complicated and I hate reading the manual. So I was using the Ask Your PDF plugin to help me with the manual. And uh, it didn't change my life or anything, but it is kind of fun to provide documents that ChatGPT knows nothing about, like my generator manual or a research paper that was just published. And that's what I'm gonna do here. I have this research paper that a friend sent me, 10 Steps to Complex Learning. 
it's not terribly long, it's 10 pages or so. Um, but I'm gonna see if I can use Ask Your PDF to summarize this research paper, and then I can have a conversation with ChatGPT about this paper. So what I need to do is have a link to some PDF. I need to install the plugin Ask Your PDF, which I've already done, and then I need to enable it in a chat session. So check that box. And then, uh, like with any plugin, I can start with, you know, how does this plugin work? And it will tell me the different uh, features of the plugin, including, I presume, the ability to download and store a PDF. There we go. So we can provide a URL to a PDF document. It will validate the URL. Then it will download it. It will store it in a vector database. And then we can perform queries against that PDF. We can ask questions. So let's give it a shot. I'm going to tell it to download this PDF. And I have the URL to this research paper pasted right here. Now this is something ordinarily ChatGPT cannot do, right? There is no downloading of anything. It doesn't work with PDFs. This can take a little bit. We can see the plugin is working. It's thinking something is running. And one thing that's kind of frustrating with a lot of the plugins I've used is that they error out pretty frequently. So hopefully that doesn't happen here, although it has happened to me before with this particular plugin. Okay, it did it. It said that it successfully downloaded the plugin or the PDF and it gives me a document ID and then it automatically starts by spitting out a summary. Um, I won't make you read this summary, but it's accurate. I have read this paper, so uh, I know that this summary is not bad. It discusses the 10 steps to complex learning, a modified version of the four component instructional design model aimed at developing educational and training programs. Okay, and now I can ask it specific questions. So here's a really simple one. Like who wrote the research paper? And we wait. And we wait kind of a long time because the process here is somewhat complex. It is having to go find this PDF that it downloaded and stored in a vector database. It uses something called embedding, so we're really not going to talk about. But eventually it retrieves the correct information. Paul Kirshner, and uh, I am totally going to butcher this name, this Dutch name. Let's verify, is that correct? And yes, it is. That was a simple enough question. And uh, I could you know, ask it something about one of these sections, maybe ask it, what is, um, what does the paper say about comp compartmentalization? Mentalization. You get the picture, right? We're now able to work with documents that ChatGBT could not work with without this plugin. It is slow. It involves a bunch of requests and communicating with a, you know, a database, and it, it's not the smoothest process but it is gonna give me decent answers. And it's not perfect, but here we go. It's finding some key points where it mentions compartmental, compartmentalization in the paper. So that's just one example of another plugin. I'll show a few more. Next up, we'll take a look at another plugin. Uh, this one has to do with YouTube videos. It's called Chat With Video, and it allows you to ask questions, analyze, and parse their YouTube videos simply by providing a YouTube URL. Um, I tried a few of these. There's a bunch of similar, you can see I've installed some video highlight and video insights um, and this one seemed to work the best chat with video it actually was quite impressive the first time i tried it at least so i have two different youtube videos let's try this one 21 awesome web features you're not using yet i'm going to copy the url and ask it to summarize this youtube video and let's see what it does we wait it is presumably trying to get a transcript. Okay, here's a summary of the key points. And it may take a while, but these are different parts of the video. Let's verify if it's accurate. So native HTML dialogue, native popovers, web GPU. If I fast forward through here, in fact, we do have dialogue is one of the things it talks about. And the second point is popovers. So it seems like it's doing a pretty good job. Um, pretty nifty, honestly. I was impressed with it and it, it doesn't take that long. Let's try one more. This is a review or a first impression of Apple's Vision Pro headset. And uh, in this video, I watched it earlier today. This reviewer talked about, she was pretty impressed with it. Although after like 15 minutes or so, it gave her red marks on her head and felt heavy and she wasn't impressed with the battery life. And those are some of the key points I can remember. Let's try this one. What's this video about? And like I said, pretty quick. That is surprising to me. So it's a review of Apple's new mixed reality headset. Here's a summary of the key points. 
I mean, it's it's pretty amazing, honestly. It says the headset is compared to a giant Apple Watch attached to the head, and one of the very first things she does in this video is comparing it to an Apple Watch on her head. Um, so it's just using the transcripts. You know, she talks about everything that is summarized here. It can actually watch the video and tell you what's happening in the video. It's just based off of what is said, but still it's pretty impressive. And it even picked up on what I was saying that the reviewer mentioned it was comfortable for about 15 minutes and then the weight started to get noticeable. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's pretty impressive. So it will presumably have trouble with very long videos. I picked two on purpose that were eight minutes and five minutes. I haven't tried it with anything longer, but I would assume it, it would run out of space or context uh, and you know get cut off early. So that's a pretty impressive one. And uh, it's one I can at least recommend for now. And it works the best by far out of the handful of YouTube summarizing plugins that I've played with. Next, we'll take a look at the Open Table plugin put out by Open Table, which is uh, a company, it's a website that helps you find and make restaurant reservations. And that's exactly what this plugin does. It helps you make, uh, well, it helps you at least find restaurants and reservations using Open Table, but in a chat based format. I don't show this necessarily because <laughs> you'll be making restaurant reservations all the time, but it's an example of a plugin put out by a company. So we'll also look at the Kayak plugin in the next video. It's a little bit different, um, but let's start with Open Table. So to use OpenTable, of course, we can start with how does this plugin work? And it will tell us the different things that it can do. But it basically boils down to uh, it will tell us about restaurant reservations that are available in different cities, different times, meal types, occasions, the number of people in our party, uh, a search radius, latitude and longitude even. There's a whole bunch of different parameters. So let's say I'm trying to plan a birthday party for my sister who lives in New York City. Um, I need a reservation for... Let's make it large, eight people in New York City on, and I'll say August, I don't know, 17th. And I could get specific about different types of food, but why don't I just start with this? So reservation for eight people in New York City on August 17th. It's then going to query open tables databases and give me some sort of response. Oh, more details about the type of restaurant. Okay. Let's say, um, we want a very fancy restaurant. <laughs> I don't know if that's specific enough. Let's see if it can handle very fancy <laughs> as our query. Okay. So here are some fancy restaurants where you can make a reservation for eight people on August 17th. And then it gives me a link. You can see it's using markdown format. So here's one of the restaurants it suggested based on these links. Cafe Del Sas, and then I can make my reservation. Eight people, I guess it's already sort of pre-filled out for me. Anyway, I don't know if I would use this all that often, but it is just another example of uh, a plugin. In this case, it's a plugin put out by a specific company to help you connect to their product. In the next video, we'll take a look at another example similar to this one, but it's a little more complex because it actually requires some authentication. All of the plugins that we've used so far haven't required two-factor authentication to be enabled, but some of the plugins in the store do require two-factor auth. One example of this, uh, if I go to the store and I go to the popular plugins, one example would be, where are you? Notable, right here. This is a plugin that helps us make Python and different coding notebooks, which if you're not a developer, it doesn't matter. I'm just showing this as an example here. It will tell me you need to enable two-factor authentication. And you only have to do this one time, but I haven't done it yet on this account. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Enable two-factor auth. And then I'll have to sign back in. And then it's going to give me a QR code. And I'll scan this using my Authenticator app on my phone. Or just any uh, camera app will open the link. Okay, that opens in Authenticator. And then it gives me my code in the Authenticator app. Just a one-time code, so I guess I'll show it to you. And then it takes me back to chat. And let's see, did that install it? No, I now have to go and install it separately. So now I can install plugins like Notable, which I will just briefly do here. Okay, so now we see something completely different. When I install a plugin that requires authentication, we then will authenticate with the actual application or the provider, in this case, Notable. So I'll create an account with my GitHub login. I'll authorize the application. And 
eventually. And now it's installed. As you can see here, it's enabled. Let's see, how do I use this plugin? So there's a handful of these plugins that require us to authenticate. And basically it's any plugin that integrates with a third party application where you would need an account to use that application. So we don't need an account to search on OpenTable, for example. Um, but if we wanted to, and I'm sure there are plugins that do this, uh, that will actually, I don't know, create or allow you to purchase products. So let's see how this works. We can create a new project, a notable project from directly within here. I can create a new notebook. Uh, I'll just do a quick demo, create a new notebook. Okay. So it made me a new notebook and then it gives me the link. So this is an interactive Python notebook, a Jupyter notebook. Again, not at all important if you're not familiar with those concepts, but hopefully you can see this is creating something off the platform, right? This is creating a notebook on this notable website. It's giving me a tutorial. Um, and that's all that I'll show about this particular plugin. The point of this video is more about enabling two-factor auth for certain plugins that require it.